Good morning, everyone. Uh, the hour of 10 a.m. having arrived, the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology will now come to order. Without objection, the Chair is authorized to declare a recess of the Committee at any time. I'd like to welcome everyone to our hearing today entitled, An Update on the Department of Energy's Science and Technology Priorities. I will recognize first myself for five minutes for an opening statement. Uh, before we convene the hearing, I would like to recognize the absence of our friend and the chairman of this committee, Mr. Lucas of Oklahoma. Recently, he endured an, energy, uh, an injury while working on his farm. Uh, Frank is obviously a huge presence on Capitol Hill, both personally and legislatively, and only Frank could prove conclusively that a member of Congress should not tangle with a thousand pound bull. Uh, I'd like to ask everyone to keep him in your prayers and your thoughts and to wish him a speedy recovery. I know that uh, we will uh, rest easier when he's back with us here on the committee. Uh, today the Science Technology Committee will examine the U.S. Department of Energy's goals and priorities for its civilian research development demonstration and commercial application programs. I would like to welcome the Honorable Jennifer Granholm and thank her for her testimony this morning. Secretary Granholm, since your last appearance before this committee, which I believe was in May of 2021, the DOE has been substantially transformed. With the passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act in 2021 and the Inflation Reduction Act last year, the DOE received $100 billion in supplemental funding. These laws have created over 70 new programs and increased the DOE's Office of Loan Program Authority to $400 billion. To administer these new programs, the DOE underwent a major structural reorganization and expansion, creating a new undersecretary position, several new program offices, separating energy demonstration projects from their core research and development activities, and the hiring of over 1,000 new employees at DOE. In the light of these massive changes, which the DOE was tasked with seemingly overnight by Congress, I, along with many of my colleagues here on the dais, are justified in having several serious concerns. The DOE has been placing an unprecedented focus on its applied programs, and I'm troubled by the comparative lack of support for the Office of Science. The DOE Office of Science and its national laboratories play a critical role in maintaining U.S. leadership in emerging technologies, including artificial intelligence, quantum information sciences, and fusion energy. Unlike applied research, which the private sector provides abundant resources to fund, the Office of Science conducts basic research, which the federal government provides a primary role in supporting. While the Office of Science accounts for nearly 20% of DOE's annual funding, it unfortunately received less than 2% of IIJA and IRA funds. And while its mission is essential to DOE's overall mandate, the department, through its budget proposals and administrative actions, I believe, continues to demonstrate an indifference to this central responsibility. So I hope to discuss that with you today. This directly hampers our ability to innovate and compete with our adversaries, especially the Chinese Communist Party. Instead of doubling down on already funded applied energy programs, I believe the DOE should rebalance its portfolio by reprioritizing support for the Office of Science. The DOE can accomplish this by fully implementing this science committee's responsible and well-vetted authorization of this office, which was included in the CHIPS and Science Act last year. Also, as the chairman of the Investigations and Oversight Subcommittee, I am deeply concerned about the department's lack of resources assigned to the Office of Inspector General. It's troubling to me that among the hundreds of billions in newly appropriated funds and loan authorities, less than one-tenth of one percent was allocated to the OIG to oversee this new spending. This lack of oversight amplifies my concerns about the DOE's ability to implement critical research and development programs with the necessary safeguards to protect taxpayer dollars. Today, despite engagement with the DOE over many of these concerns, I remain skeptical about the department's ability to smoothly oversee the distribution of over $100 billion in addition to its annual $45 billion budget with the necessary guardrails in place. In fact, we have already experienced some problems with how these funds are being dispersed. In the fall of last year, the DOE selected a company with known links to the Chinese Communist Party to receive $200 million in federal funding. After several congressional inquiries over this alarming development, the DOE ended award negotiations with this company. However, as of this morning, the DOE has refused to provide us with its reasoning for terminating this agreement. 
The committee is waiting to receive a classified briefing by the department regarding this critical issue, and our expectation is that we will receive more information on this shortly. In addition, over the past few months, Energy Subcommittee Chairman Williams and I have submitted letters to the department requesting information on a disturbing trend of conflict of interest violations. Most recently, our oversight touched on your own practices, Madam Secretary. As public servants, I believe it's critical that we hold ourselves to the highest levels of integrity with the American people, not only in practice, but also in public perception. I hope that we have an opportunity for a productive discussion on these issues this morning. This is an unprecedented time at the Department of Energy. Americans deserve access to a secure, resilient, and affordable energy network, which permits competition and increases reliability instead of picking winners and losers in the marketplace. But we must neither break the bank nor cut corners to get this job done, and I know you share those sentiments. I want to thank you for your willingness to participate in our hearing today. I look forward to an update on your vision for the DOE and how the department intends to carry out congressional direction in a way that maximizes the return on investment for the U.S. taxpayer.